Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our example video for Bernoulli first order differential equations. We've got three examples we're going to work in this video. If one looks particularly more interesting than the other, you can go ahead and jump to that part of our video if you like. Otherwise, just hang with us while we work all three with you and get some practice at Bernoulli equations. Looking here at our first one, dy dx plus 2y is equal to 4y cubed. So remember what we are going to do in our videos first is we are always going to go ahead and divide by whatever power of y we have on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this entire equation by y cubed. That's the first part in our summary that we listed at the end of our intro to Bernoulli equations in that video. So here I would get 1 over y cubed dy dx plus 2. Now y over y cubed becomes 1 over y squared is equal to, that gets rid of all the y's on the right side, we just end up with 4. And remember the way that we're going to do this is now whatever we have next to our function here, whatever power of y this is, this is our substitution for v. So this right here tells us our v is equal to 1 over y squared, or if you want to think of that as y to the minus 2. That is our substitution. Now I'll need a substitution for dy dx, so remember we'll also need to find dv dx. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to x, power rule says we would get negative 2 y to the minus 3, also known as over y cubed. Chain rule, because y is also a function of x, gives us times dy dx. And you can see that we are really close to what we have over here, right? So let's go ahead and look at what's in front and adjust this to give us what we need. So to solve this exactly for what I have here, I would just need to divide by this negative 2, right? So on both sides, dividing by negative 2 would give me negative half dv dx is actually equal to the exact 1 over y cubed dy dx that we have here. So I just solved for this lead term right here by dividing both sides by negative 2. So if we go ahead and plug that in, negative 1 half dv dx plus 2, remember this 1 over y squared was our v, so we say 2v is equal to 4. And this is a linear equation, right? That's the goal of any Bernoulli substitution here is to make it into a linear equation. So we'll find the integrating factor, but we need to make sure this is in the normal form first. I'll need to get rid of the negative one-half, so I'll multiply the entire equation by negative two. So I'll get dv dx minus 4v is equal to negative eight, and now it's in its normal form, and I can go ahead and find my integrating factor. So I'll go ahead and do this over here. So we'll say the integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of whatever's in front of v, negative 4 dx, and the integral of negative 4 is just going to be negative 4x, so our integrating factor here is e to the negative 4x. We'll go ahead and multiply our entire equation by that, so e to the negative 4x multiplies everything, dv dx minus 4v equals negative 8. Remember our left side just becomes a product rule, so we won't distribute, so e to the negative 4x dv dx minus 4v equals, if I actually multiply over here, negative 8 e to the negative 4x. Now, this is a product rule of the derivative for v times the integrating factor. So when I take the antiderivative on this side, I get v times the integrating factor. On this side, I will actually need to do the integral and compute that and make sure, because this is not a product rule over here. And if we take the antiderivative, constant is negative 4 multiple in here, so the reciprocal of that constant comes out. So I would get divide by negative 4, and if I divide by negative 4 over here, I'll get 2. So that'll be 2e to the negative 4x plus our constant of integration. Let's go ahead and divide by e to the negative 4x. So dividing will just give us 2 there, and then we'll get plus c. Now if I'm dividing by e to the negative 4x, then that's like getting e to the positive 4x here, because we were dividing by that. And remember, v was our original substitution, right? So if you remember and look back up here, v was 1 over y squared, right? So we'll go ahead and replace v with 1 over y squared. 
So we could then say with this 1 over y squared is equal to this 2 plus ce to the 4x. I could multiply the y squared to both sides, right? I could say 1 equals y squared times 2 plus ce to the 4x. Then we could divide by that, right? So let's do that over here. So we'll get y squared is equal to 1 over 2 plus ce to the 4x. And then if we want, we could go ahead and root and say that y would be equal to plus or minus the square root of all this stuff, 1 over 2 plus ce to the 4x. If you had an initial condition and the y was positive, you would use the positive root. If the y was negative in the initial condition, you would use the negative root. Looking at our second example, x dy dx plus 2y equals 8x square root of y. This is not in the normal Bernoulli form because we have an x in the front, so we're going to go ahead and divide by x before I even worry about doing anything with my y's. So dividing by x will give us the normal form for the Bernoulli equation is dy dx plus 2 over x y is equal to 8 square root y. Okay, now remember once we're in normal form, now what we do is divide both sides by whatever we have for y on this other side. So let's go ahead and divide again now, this time focusing on the y. So we're going to divide by root y, so we don't have any y's left on the right side, right? So we'll get 1 over root y dy dx plus 2 over x. Now y divided by root y is going to make root y. And then obviously over here, 8 root y divided by root y is just going to be 8. And now we figure out our substitutions, right? So if I look over here, I can see that this is going to be my v. So I know that v is equal to the square root of y. Right? So if I'm trying to figure out then dv dx, well, dv dx is going to be the derivative of this, which would be 1 half y to the negative 1 half, also known as square root y down here. But remember, y is a function of x, so the chain rule gives us times dy dx here. So now let's look at what we have for our first term and see what we have here and notice what we need to do to change it. Right? So you notice this is off by a 2 down here, so what would I do to this to make it exactly that? I would multiply both sides by 2. So our substitutions here will have v is equal to root y, and we're actually going to use 2 dv dx is equal to 1 over root y dy dx. Okay, so I have direct substitutions for this here, and I have a substitution for that there, and we're good to go, right? So we will then get 2 dv dx plus 2 over x, now my v goes in here, times v, is equal to 8. We are linear with v and x now, but we need to get it in the normal form, so we need to divide by 2 before we do anything with integrating factors. So we get dv dx plus 1 over x, v, is equal to 4, right? We divided everything by 2. Now I think we can see what's going to happen with the integrating factor, right? Our integrating factor is going to equal e to the integral of 1 over x dx, because we have this 1 over x right here next to our linear term v. This integral is actually ln of x, right? So we get e to the ln x, also known as x. So our integrating factor is x. We'll go ahead and multiply our entire equation by the integrating factor. Now we won't distribute on the left side we know that this is a product rule of the integrating factor and v, so we'll keep that in mind. Multiplying the other side out, we get 4x. Remember that this is the derivative of v times x, v times the integrating factor, so when we take the antiderivative, we'll just get v times x. This is not a product rule over here, so we'll go ahead and actually do the integral. So now we go ahead and integrate. vx is going to equal, the antiderivative here would be 2x squared, power goes up by 1, divide by the new power, plus our constant of integration. I'll then need to divide by x everywhere, so we'll get that v is equal to 2x plus c over x. And now let's back substitute, right? So 
v is equal to the square root of y, we'll go ahead and call this the square root of y, is equal to 2x plus c over x. You can leave it implicitly this way, or you can go ahead and square both sides. We want to make sure that everybody realizes when you square both sides of an equation, and then you go trying to start plugging things in, it's possible you get a false statement. So squaring both sides is a really big, uh, you know, beware. So we just want to make sure you might want to leave it like this implicitly, or with a big beware, you could say that y is equal to 2x plus c over x, all squared. Okay, let's look at our last example. dy dx plus y equals xy to the 4. We are already in the normal form for Bernoulli at least, so we'll go ahead and take two dividing by our power of y on the right side. We'll divide everything by y to the 4. That will give us 1 over y to the 4 dy dx plus here we'll just have 1 over y cubed is equal to x. Now we can see here that this is going to be our v, so we'll make a note that v is going to be equal to 1 over y cubed, also known as y to the minus 3. And if v is y to the negative 3, then we should know dv dx is going to equal power rule would be negative 3, the power would go down by 1, y to the negative 4, so that would be over y to the 4. Chain rule gives us times dy dx, because y is a function of x. So we have a substitution for this right here, that's v. This we're off by a negative 3, right? So I need to divide both sides by negative 3, and then I would get exactly what I have over here for this original statement. So let's divide both sides by 3 here. We'll say negative 1 third dv dx is exactly what we have here, 1 over y to the 4 dy dx. So now we'll go ahead and substitute all that in. Let's do it up here. So we will have negative 1 third dv dx plus v is equal to x. It's starting to look pretty simple, isn't it? This is linear, but it's not in the normal form because negative one third is out front. So I need to multiply everything by negative three to get it in the normal form because we just want dv dx in the front. That'll give us minus three v equals negative three x. Okay, let's go ahead and find our integrating factor now that we're in normal form. So our integrating factor for this one will equal e to the integral of whatever's in front of our linear v here, negative 3 dx. Integral of negative 3 is just going to give us negative 3x there, so we get e to the negative 3x. e to the negative 3x is our integrating factor, so we'll go ahead and multiply the entire equation by that integrating factor. We get e to the negative 3x times our dv dx minus 3v equals negative 3x. On the left hand side, e to the negative 3x, I won't distribute, I'll just go ahead and leave that times the left hand side. And then here I would have negative 3x e to the negative 3x, we'll go ahead and have to integrate that. So the antiderivative here, remember this is a product rule derivative, so this becomes v times the integrating factor. Over here, we get the integral of negative 3x e to the negative 3x dx. Doing some integration here, we would need to integrate this by parts. So we could say u is equal to negative 3x, and dv is e to the negative 3x dx. And if that's true, then du would be negative 3 dx. And antiderivative here, v would be negative one-third e to the negative 3x. We go ahead and use our integration by parts, so that says v e to the negative 3x on the left is equal to uv, so we have negative a third times negative 3, that just becomes a 1, so we get x e to the negative 3x 
minus integral v du. So notice a couple things about v du. Uh, negative times negative, we'd have a positive thing in here. And then three times a third, that's going to reduce to one. So really we just get the antiderivative of e to the negative three x dx here. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. So we get v e to the negative three x is equal to x e to the negative three x. Okay. Reciprocal of this constant multiple comes out, so a negative one-third comes out. We already have a negative, so we get plus one-third e to the negative 3x plus our constant finally. Let's solve for our v, so dividing by e to the negative 3x everywhere would give us v equals, it would get rid of the exponential there, would just have x, it'll get rid of the exponential here, so we'll have plus a third Plus, now here, c divided by e to the negative 3x would be c e to the positive 3x, because we're dividing by that. Let's go ahead and replace back v in terms of y. So remember, v was 1 over y cubed, so we'll go ahead and say 1 over y cubed is equal to all this stuff here. Now you have some options here. You could go ahead and leave this implicit. Now you could go ahead and say that this is your answer. That would be an implicit solution for y because it is not solved for y. But you could also go ahead and get an explicit solution and solve for y. Be careful that you don't just flip this over and say y cubed is equal to the reciprocal of this and this and this. That's not true. What you would need to do is actually get a common denominator. So you would actually say, so we'll say or 1 over y cubed is equal to if I get a common denominator here multiplying these by 3, that would give me 3x plus 1 plus, if I multiply a constant times something, that would just be some constant times that something still. So we'd get all of that over 3. And now we can solve by reciprocal and say y cubed is equal to 3 over all of this 3x plus 1 plus c e to the 3x. And then if you want, you can go ahead and take your cube root of both sides there and get y. Okay everybody, thanks for practicing Bernoulli equations with us. Hopefully some of our examples helped you out. We'll see you next time.